Must be warm in here. I'm always warm, don't you? I only turned one furnace on this morning, that's all. Well, early this morning I was up here, it was cold in here. These block walls, they just don't know what it is to. But somebody's very welcome to go turn it off. Because it's definitely hot up here. Thank you. Somebody give me orders. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I want you to open your Bibles to Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to read two verses down there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, if you can find Ephesians, I'm certainly you can find 1 Thessalonians because it's in this book. So, I want to read two verses over here. This may be a different twist this morning, but I want to share this with you. And it's not anything that you don't already know. You can just read the news and figure this out. And so, uh, but I want to share this with you. Um, thank you, Connie. I loved your Sunday school. I'm sorry I missed part of it, but boy, that was good. It was good. All right, I'm going to read two verses, 23 and 24, okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. These are awesome verses. I read these just once in a while. I run over there. Just read them because they're so good. Watch what the Bible says here. It says this, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your, your whole spirit and soul and, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. How many believe God's faithful? Amen? Amen. You believe he's able to do what he says? Yeah. He bet he's able. Everybody say holy. holy. Now we're not talking about holy as in, you know, sanctified, but we're talking about holy as in complete. All right? So the Bible says that, he says, now I love the way Paul said this, in the very God of peace, sanctify you. How many of you know what sanctify means? Set you apart, right? Set you, holy, spirit, soul, body. He says that, he says, and preserve blameless. How many of you want to be preserved? You want to be preserved? Yeah. Well, that was kind of weak. How many of you want to be preserved? Yeah. I do. How many like preserves? Yeah. Ooh, me too. The other day we went, this is the rabbit trail, but let me run this rabbit down. We went down to the, uh, the 99 cent store. How many have you ever been there for? Well, I just walking down the aisle minding my own business and this little thing is about like this little square jar about like that and it looked like strawberries and I thought I wonder what that is so I picked that up and I said hmm strawberries I want that so I bought it for 99 cents I brought it home and whoo buddy it was worth every dime of it it was preserves all it is is strawberries and what do you add to the strawberries to make it pectin that's all it is you guys are all preservers Whatever that is. I don't care what it's good. I don't know. You caught it on there. It's good. But God wants to preserve you. Now, the last last uh, Wednesday night we were talking about out of uh, First John. The Bible says that, uh, and I, I I read this verse a thousand times. I was telling them Wednesday night. The Bible says that uh, you know uh, He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And uh, did you know that in these days, God knows how to preserve you in times of trouble? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Good. I'm glad you all agree. Um, <clears throat> did you know God's in control and he's bigger than everything that's going on? Yeah. And did you know that even though there's darkness in the world and there's the darkness and gross darkness, the Bible says, covers the people, it's ugly, it's getting darker, it's getting blacker, it's getting... A, but God's light is shining brighter and brighter and brighter. And I want to tell you something. Uh, you know, it's amazing to me how... You read the book of, of Exodus and listen to me real closely. God made a difference. I said God made a difference. Now, if anybody's going to make a difference, it's going to have to be God. Because I want you to know that you're not popular as a Christian. Did you know that? You're, it's getting worse all the time. And I don't know if you've realized this or even if you knew this, but in America, they want to remove God completely. Well, unfortunately, that's the wrong direction to go. And it's going to get ugly. And uh, I, I, I don't know if you know this. Maybe we live a protected life. But you know, around the world, it's not pretty. <coughs> Christians are getting beaten and crucified and beat up and and killed all the time. 
Everybody say, I'm thankful. I live in America. Uh -huh. You ought to be thankful. Because if you're a Christian and you live in, uh, we'll just call it maybe Saudi Arabia, they'll shoot you. If you pack a Bible around, they'll hate you. Um, they, don't, they don't put up with it. I wonder why. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why is that? I mean, what's, what's the threat here? What's the threat? It's just a book. Oh, but there's power in those words. You say, oh, God's dead. No, he ain't. Ask Saudi Arabia if they want a Bible. They don't want no Bible. Ask Pakistan. Ask any Muslim country. Do you want a Bible? I'll give you one. No, they don't want one. Why? Because it represents power. It represents real, you know, the real deal. It's the truth. You know, we was talking about this the other day, and I want to get back to my, my, my talk about on Wednesday night there for a minute, but we were talking about, um, I, I, I know that you understand this, but all around the world, you know, Christians are not welcome. They're not loved. That's right, they hated Jesus and they're going to hate you. Might as well get used to it. That's why we better learn, I was asking myself a question just a minute, we better learn to pull together. And I was watching you all out there going round and round. I'm going, I really wonder if we love each other that much. You know what I mean? Oh, bless you, I love you, but back at home, how do you treat me? What's going on behind the scenes? Do you really love me? Do you really love this church? Are you able to just give because you want to? Or is it because, well, I feel like I'm obligated. Yeah, you have no obligation. You either do or you don't. Jesus wasn't obligated to love me. He did because he couldn't help himself. Now, you see, I want you to hear me. And I want you to get a handle on this because we was talking about it on Wednesday night. And i got to say this because it's important. Did you know that the, the Bible says perfect love cast out fear? Remember? Remember what I was talking about? And remember, it was talking about judgment. In the day when Jesus returns, the judgment of God has no worry for me. It has no fret over me because I'm not appointed to God's wrath. How about you? Amen. I am not going to go through the wrath of God. No, sir. Amen. Because God makes a difference. Amen. You got me? Yes. Let me tell you something. If, you're, if, you, if, if you think you're going to go through God's wrath, you need to write the Bible. Because he said, you are not appointed unto wrath. How many of you know God's not mad at you? There will come a day when God's anger and his furiosity will be, well, I got some scripture for it, but there's coming a day when the cup of his indignation is going to be like, well, it's full. I, can I tell you something? I've taken a glass before and filled it up to where it's just right on the edge and it's just shaking right there. Just before it runs over, I think that's where we're at. I really do. I think that we're, God's cup is just so full, just a little bit more, and it's going to run over, and then you better pay attention. Listen, one more time, let me say it again. It's better to fall on the rock and be broken than it is to have the rock fall on you and grind you to powder. Did you know that God's able to grind you to powder? The Bible says to fear the God that can not only kill your body, but can send you to hell. And God don't send people to hell. But I'm just trying to make a point here. There's so much out there, they don't fear God. They act like he's just, you know, it bothers me, the man upstairs. He ain't the man upstairs, folks. He's the God of creation, the Almighty. Now, i gotta, I got to just say this, and I just want to run through, and I don't want to talk about end time things particularly. Uh, you know, I, how many of you believe that I always, and I want you to hear me, I believe Jesus is coming. There is no question. He will come back just, how many of you believe the Bible? The Bible says, they're gazing off into heaven in the book of Acts chapter 1. They go, hey, whoo, there he goes. And the angel comes and says, hey, what are y'all gazing off into heaven for? This same Jesus is going to come in like manner. That's right. And so if he went away like that, I guarantee he's coming back just like that. Because the angels didn't lie to him. And I like that. Now, you know, we could stand up here and we can argue about the coming of the Lord forever. But that's not going to happen. Because, hey, I, I, anymore I just tell people, you know what? Believe what you got to believe, but time's going to tell. You know, it's just all going to come about because God's in control and he's going to do it his way. And it doesn't really matter what I think or you think. God's going to do it his way. 
even though I have a thought on the matter. And that's okay, because I think you need to study to show yourself approved. A workman, how many of you believe that? You don't just take my word for anything, never. You better get yourself in the Bible, because you know what? If you have a Bible, God's going to come to you and you say, hey, how come you took his word for it? You didn't ever study it for yourself? No, I didn't have time. Well, you better do it for yourself. I always tell people, you need to read the Bible. Don't take my word for it. But the Bible says, listen to this. How many of you believe he wants to preserve you? Yeah, I believe that. I like what one preacher said. He says, get all you can and can all you get. Right? That's preserves. My mom and Donna, they, they're going to, one of these days, I don't know, maybe not. They're going to teach me how to make, yeah, they're going to teach me how to make, yeah. See, they knew. They knew what I was talking about. Their taco sauce is just over the top good. And I always tell them, you know, make it a little hotter. Make it a little hotter. I remember I went over to Gary's house and he said, well, I got some hot sauce that'll burn you. He said, well, I'm, I, you know, I take about a handful of habaneros and throw them in there and put a little apple, or I mean, tomato sauce in there. Apple sauce, that ought to be good. And he says, it's, it's, it's okay. Well, I don't know if you've ever eaten habanero before, but they're way hot. And they will set you on fire. I don't need it that hot, but I like a little bit of it, you know, a little bit of it. You know, keep you awake, make you sweat, make your nose drip. Um, but I believe that God wants to preserve us. And it doesn't matter where we go or how far we go, God wants to preserve us. Now, the Bible says in Matthew 24, well, let me read this and I'm going to read the latter part of it. Because this is what I really want to talk about in the midst of what I'm saying here. I want to show you this. It says this in Matthew 24, 34, or 30, uh, 37 through 40. It says, but as the day as days of Noah were, everybody say Noah. Noah. Yeah. So shall also the coming of the man of son of man be. So we need to understand that whatever was going on in Noah's day, that's what's going to be going on in this day, right? Yeah. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came. Well, wow, isn't that amazing? Noah had preached for 120 years. Boys, get ready. God's fixing to come. You, I'm going to read to you out of Genesis in a minute because it's important. He, listen, I'm just going to keep reading. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also... Uh, the coming of the Son of Man be, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Look at this now. This is in Genesis, and you don't have to run back and forth because I just have scriptures here. Genesis 6, 5 through 9, and the Bible says this concerning that particular day. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagine, imagination of thought of his heart was on evil. How often? Everybody say continually. And he repented the Lord that he made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah, everybody say Noah. Noah. What did he find? He found favor. He found grace. Same thing. In the uh, eyes of the Lord. Everybody say, I found grace. Right in the eyes of the Lord. You're right. And guess what? The flood came and the flood went. But guess who lived? <clears throat> Noah. Who all got took away? All the evil people died. I haven't seen the movie Noah, and I guess I won't now after Connie's little speech on it. <laughs> I'm, I, I could go see it anyway because it ain't going to change my mind. How many of you know God didn't destroy the earth because uh, men was destroying the earth? He destroyed the earth because of the sin and the wickedness and the, the the garbage. Okay, now watch this. He says, these are the generations of Noah. I don't need to rock, read all that. It says, now it says, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. How many of you know that describes you and me? Now, I mean, I mean you might say, oh, Noah was, he, he had to be something. I mean, watch what the Bible says. He was a just man, perfect in his generation. Hey, we got an advantage on Noah. We know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So where does that leave us? We are perfect in our generation. I believe when God looks at us, he sees us through the eyes of the blood. Amen? All right. Now watch. The Bible says this. The Bible says uh, that uh, 
the, the, uh, the, the minds of men were on evil continually. Remember I just read that? And it grieved the Lord that he even made man because it was so bad. And in another place he's talking, and I think I put it in here. Let me see if I did. He says, uh, I didn't put it in here, but there's another place the Bible talks about, and the earth was uh, full of violence in Noah's day. How many have ever looked at the news lately? What do they report? Well, so-and-so loves this person, and they're helping over here, and they're doing... No, they don't. It's always violence, violence, violence. If it's not war, it's somebody killing somebody. If it's not somebody killing somebody with a gun, they kill them with a knife, or they beat them. It can be anything. You know, child abuse is through the roof. Abuse in general is through the roof. So, let me ask you a question. What do you expect in this day and age? Because I do believe that we're down to the very end of the age. I believe we're within... With it, you know, in, in the in the for, in the frame of time, we're down to the very last minutes. I do. I believe that. I, you, you can believe what you want to, but I believe that, and I believe that you can expect whatever was in the days of Noah. That's going to be in this day right now, right? And and the Bible says that there was violence. By implication, the Bible is talking about this. It's wrong. Uh, it's unjust gain. <sighs> unjust gain, really. You know, our whole, the whole American government is corrupt. You know why? Unjust gain. I heard somebody say today, they said, well, I wonder how so-and-so, and I won't call his name because I don't want to be mean, even though I don't believe in anything he does. And I'm not talking about our president. But I'm just saying, everything he does, you know, people, let me ask you a question. Why do people run for an office that pays $250,000 a year and spend $2 million to get that seat. Well, now that makes a lot of sense, don't it? There's something going on. I mean, they spend millions of dollars in the, in the, mayor, in the, in the, in the race for mayor of, 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 of New York, and the, the job don't pay that much. But they spend millions of dollars to get this. I wonder why. How many of you know that there's a, a little corruption going on. Unjust gain. You know what? Somebody says, well, it doesn't matter. They're, 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 you know, they're just sinners and they just do. You know what? Nothing gets away from God. He keeps good books. He keeps good books. And let me tell you something about those folks. The, the minute they repent, it'll be gone. God, it'll, he'll wash it all away and he'll fix them. That's how kind he is. How many of you notice there's injustices all around? Everywhere you look, there's injustices. You know, I was thinking about this. Um, so, it just bothers me so much. You see all of these wonderful little children running around. And like Connie was saying this morning, I wonder why America's in such a mess that we're in. Well, because there is no daddies anymore. There's no mamas anymore. The kids just come into the world and they have to fend for themselves. Well, you know, did you know that the basis of America is about the family? Well, the, if you want a godly nation, you have to have a you have to have some kind of foundation, right? And the foundation of every of every quality nation is the uh, the family. And you know, how many of you know that the family is what makes the church happen? So there's all this stuff going on. So the Bible says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Man, we're right there. Now watch this. The Bible says this. Let me just read a few scriptures. And you don't have to go there. And the Bible says this. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the city, cities of the nation fell. And great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her, excuse me, the, the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fa uh, fled away and the mountains were not found. And there fell among men great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceedingly great. I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you uh, uh, understand, but you know, you just don't want to play games with God. Um, the Bible says that um, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Now, you know, some people say, well, God's full of grace, and he is. But you know what? God is not cockeyed. Did you know that? He's absolutely, the, he's absolutely uh, 
level-headed. I don't know how to say that. Because if he's, did you know that if he's full of grace, he's also can be the other way. There's got to be, there's two sides that he's got to be. He's got to be, he's got to be just. Did you know that? He's got to be just. Now, let me go on. Let me read a few more scriptures here. The Bible says this, watch what he says. He says, And the third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of God. Did you hear that? How many of you know God's not going to let nothing get away from him? I'm just trying to make a point here that, that hey, all of the stuff that's going on in the world today, God's got it all under control. And it's not going to get away from you. Did you know that? It's not going to get away from you. I'm going to tell you something. If there's ever been a day, now you listen closely. If there's ever been a day that you need to serve God, it would be today. How many of you want to be preserved? Because I guarantee you this world is going to eat your lunch if you run with the crowd. Listen to me, I'm going to say it one time. If you run with the crowd, you're going to get your, you're going to get your hiney kicked. You got it? Because the world is not going to protect you. It's not going to help you. You hear me? You're going to need Jesus. And He's your only preservation. If you think you're going to get preserved somewhere else, you've got a big fat coming. You might say, well, yeah, but what if I end up in this and end up in prison and end up being beat? I'm telling you right now. You need to fear the God that can save you. You don't need to fear the man that can just kill your body. They can't send you to hell. They can't judge you. You know what? We're, we're, we're weenies in America. Kind of. You know, the, the people get born again in other countries. And a lot of times, they pay for it with their life. Or they pay for it with their life in prison. Or they pay for it with their life in hard labor. Why? Well, they're Christian. They're dirt. They're worms. No. Did you read Hebrews 11. Read the latter part of Hebrews 11. Please do it. Think about Moses. Listen to this. Think about Moses now. He counted it, he counted it better to... Run with the people of God than to serve with the, the people of Israel, Egypt. Did you know Moses paid for that? I mean, it was not an easy thing for Moses to do. I mean, he lived in the king's palace. He was the son of a Pharaoh. Or he, that's the way he was raised. But he chose to walk with God. Let me ask you a question. What's your choice? I want you to ask yourself the question, what's my choice? Listen, answer me this, or answer yourself this. Come hell or high water, what's your choice? What's your choice? You going to run with the crowd? You going to be like the world? You going to act like the world? Because I guarantee you the world's going to eat you. It's true. Watch this. Now the Bible says in... in uh, in Luke, watch this. I'm going to read this to you. I got to. I got to run through this. But watch this now. Well, let me give you one more on Noah. It says, "But, but with thee, Noah, will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife and thy sons, uh, and the wives with thee." Did you know that when he went into that ark, I could preach on the ark. But did you know when he went into that ark, he did not have the power to shut the door to that ark. It was so huge. You know who shut the door to that ark? God Almighty did. So that tells me something. When God says it's over, you better be in the ark. Otherwise, you're going to be swimming. Right? Let me just say this, because this is important, and, and, and people think it's a joke, especially young people. They think it's a joke. Let me tell you something. If you don't get in the ark, Everybody, everybody understand you got to get in. How many of you know if you want to come to church, you have to get up and you have to drive down here and you have to walk in the door. If you want to get in the ark, you have to make the decision. I'm getting in that ark, dude. Did you know that God, God's done everything? Did you know Jesus went to heaven? He sat down. 
You know why? Because he did everything that had to be done to get you in that ark. He don't have to do anymore. All you need to do is understand that he saved you, he delivered you. He did it 2,000 years ago. You need to respond to that, and you need to get yourself in the ark because it's going to start raining. And it's going to start raining the wrath of God. That part of it in Revelation, it sounds like, it sounded like Noah's day. The Bible says that, that it, it, the hills disappeared and, and, and it... I'm going to tell you something. When God starts to shake your world, you need to thank Him because He's just trying to wake you up. The Bible also says this. The Bible, read this. The Bible says in Luke 17, now watch, you need to read this. It says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the, also in the days of the coming of some man. They did eat and drink, marrying wives, given in marriage, until the day Noah entered in the flood, into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also in the days of who? Everybody say Lot. Uh oh. They eat and drink, drank, broke, sold. They planted and they built. Everybody say the days of Lot. What were the days of Lot like? Well, the days of Noah and the days of not Lot, we can kind of get a picture of what kind of days are, are ahead. Am I right? I mean, if you know anything about the days of Noah, which, you know, there's not a lot written there. There's a little bit more written maybe about the days of Lot. How many of you know that in the days of Lot, um, it wasn't a pretty thing? Let me ask you this question. Listen, before I say anything about this, I want you to get a handle on this. Did you know that God just loves people? But there's got to come a point where he says, you know what? See, in the Old Testament, the reason he would destroy people is because he couldn't, there was, no, there was no way to eliminate sin except just kill the people in the Old Covenant. So he would destroy, you know, he told, he, I don't remember who he told, but he says, you go down there and you kill all the Amorites. Kill them all. And he didn't. And he came back to haunt them. My point is that in that day, they didn't have, God just dealt with it on the level he had was just, well, kill all the flesh. That's what he did in the book of Genesis. He just said, well, I, it repents me that I made these guys because they're full of evil and their mind is on evil continually. I'll just wipe them all out. But Noah found grace and God kept him. Well, in the days of Lot, it's pretty much the same thing. Where did Lot live? Do you remember? Yeah, he lived down there in Sodom. You know, Sodom was in a beautiful place. The Bible says concerning that, that Abraham and Lot stood on the mountain and they looked out across there and they go, well, Abraham told him, he says, you know what, if you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. Just take your pick, Lot. It's all before you. Anything you want, go get it. And Lot says, mm, that's nice down there. I like it. You know, it's nice and it's got a river running down there and there's a lot of water. The Bible says it was well watered. I think I'm going to go down there. Okay, fine. Go down there. Abraham says, I'll go the other way. And God tells Abraham, he says, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he took the mountain country. How many of you want to take the kingdom? The mountain country. Anyway, Lot goes down there and he settles in the city of Sodom. That just sounds dirty, don't it? <laughs> I don't know. And you know, I, 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 uh, I, know that, I know that you're not called to be a judge, and I'm not judging. But the fact remains that the city was so evil, God destroyed it. What was the evil that was going on in that city? What was it? Well, if you don't know this, I'm going to tell you, the Bible says that when the angels came in to the city, they knocked on Lot's door, and guess what? Let, Lot let them in. And guess who showed up at Lot's door? All the men of the city. They wanted to know them. Well, that's a sexual term. So to me, it sounds like they had a problem with homosexuality. Sodomy. I wonder where that word came from. Hmm. Let me explain myself one more time. Did you know that God saves those kind of people? And he's not mad at them. He wants to save them. It's sin. He's not, he's not going to kill them because they're, they're homosexuals. He's going to forgive them if they'll ask him. How many of you know that... Listen, I want you to hear me because people think that God hates homosexuals. That's just a plain outright lie. That's a garbage. 
I remember I told you this before, but somebody asked Cassie, would you let me come to your church knowing I'm a lesbian? And Cassie just laughed at him and said, of course you could come to our church. That's like going to a, that's like going to a, a body shop and saying, would you let me bring my car in here since it's been wrecked? Well, that's what it's for, you Fruit Loop. I mean, that's why you bring them to me. What do you think church is about? It's to help people, not to condemn them. I mean, they, how many of you know that you all have problems? You all have sins in your life, right? But goodness... Jesus is bigger than your sin. How many of you never sin? See, the Bible says you've been saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. You've been saved, you're being saved, and you're going to still be saved. So it's a progressive thing, even in a homosexual's life or a lesbian's life or a murderer's life. Or it's a process, man. How many of you know God can save a homosexual and he may practice for a while? Listen to me closely, please. But that don't mean that God's going to judge him in his sin. Because I believe the blood of Jesus is bigger than homosexuality. And there comes a point where God will deliver him completely. How many of you know that a lot of times people, let's just take cigarettes, for example. It's a deadly sin. Ooh. Now, I know I'm just being funny. But let's just say it, for example. It's a de- How many of you know a lot of people who get born again, they still smoke? Just like me, I still drink Pepsi. I quit drinking Pepsi. I only had one in the past six months. That's good for me. I still eat donuts. We'll use that. Did you know sugar is just as addictive as the rest of it? But just say that, you know, they get born again. Did you know that one of these days that there will come a point where it, it's possible it just falls off? It's just, just, I don't need that anymore. The point I'm trying to make is sin is sin. And God's going to judge sin. So I want you to go out and find all the homosexuals and lesbians you can find and bring them to church with you. And I'm serious about that. Because that's the only place they're ever going to find help. Did you know that it's not your job to beat them up and kill them? It's your job to love them and get them born again and let Jesus save them and deliver them. Because he loves them. In this case, listen to me. In this case, in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were... Evil. They didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want a part of God. Let me tell you something. I was watching people on TV, and there's so many people out there, they don't want God in their life. That's why they say, well, I'm an atheist. No, you're rebellious. And you don't want to hear about God because, like Waylon Waylon told me this, he said, because if they want to admit there's a God, then they got to be responsible to him or accountable to him. Well, I got good news for, well, I got bad news for those kind of people. They're going to be accountable to him either way. They might as well bow their knee now and let him have mercy because when he grinds you to powder, you're not, you're going to be incredibly miserable. But I want to make a point here. God did judge Sodom and Gomorrah, didn't he? And he rained fire and brimstone on them and they died. But guess what happened to Lot? He was preserved. Poor old Lot's wife, she's running. She goes, dude, i got to have a look back. Pillar of salt. How many of you know back there ain't nothing to look for? Ain't nothing back there you want. Especially in Sodom and Gomorrah, ain't nothing back there you need. Get delivered and go on, boy. That's a good thing. Can you see God's mercy in this, though? I'm trying to present it where God's merciful. He will save everybody. And anybody, even the most rebellious. You get this now, watch this. Watch the intercession of Abraham. I got to quit, but watch this. He comes to God and he says, hey God, you know what? I know that's an evil city, but if there's just 50 righteous men, would you say, oh yeah, no problem. He gets him all the way down to 10 men. There weren't even 10 men in these two big old cities. There weren't 10 men. And Abraham's going, well... And God God agreed. He said, if you can find me 10, I'll keep it. Just 10. I'll keep it. No, couldn't do it. They couldn't find even 10 men. What an evil place. Abraham said, okay, God, you win. What can I say? And he burned it. What a merciful God. You know, can you see that the mercy of God endures and endures? 
You know, a lot of times me and you, we look at people and you say, I don't know why God don't just kill them. <laughs> Come on. You've never said that, have you? Well, you righteous crew. Why don't God just take them off the earth? Because he's merciful and he's merciful and he's merciful. And you're going, oh, God, please, I get tired of your mercy. Please help us on this guy. No. God's mercy just reaches and reaches. And you worry about going to hell. You're, there's something wrong with you. God is so merciful. If you just call on him. Did you know what? You can be a, a practicing lesbian, homosexual, murderer, backbiting, fat fool. How's that? Boy, you can get all of it in there. And did you know when you get on your deathbed, if you really understand and you repent, guess what will happen? He'll forgive you. You know what? It's going to shock you who made it to heaven and who didn't. Because I believe people, I believe even atheists on their deathbed, they're going, hmm, boy, you know what? I preach this, but I don't know for sure now. Are you sure about that? No, I'm not sure about it. And you know what? Even though they deceive a lot of people, God will forgive them right there. I re Jesus said this. He said, Father, they killed him on purpose. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Isn't it amazing? Well, there's a whole lot to be said about this, but you get my point that uh, God's merciful, but he does judge sin. And let me tell you something, we're living in the days of Lot and of Noah. It's all around you, just look around. You know what America's all about right now? Gay marriage. And they kill baby by the millions. But there's going to come a day when God's going to say, okay, I gave you all the chances I can give, now it's time. And he will pour out his wrath. And he will show his anger. And I don't want to be part of a God who sits in heaven that's angry. I want you to know that the God we serve, whether the atheist or anybody else wants to believe it, he has everything in very, very tight control. There ain't nothing getting away from him. I think it's a time to repent, don't you? Yeah. See, we need, to, we need to repent. Say, Lord, I've been really hard on people. How many of you know I am not for lesbianism or homosexuality? I'm not for sin, but I'm not for killing the people either. I'm for getting them saved. But, you know, we're so, Christians are so mean. I watched Jermaine yesterday when I spoke to her, you know. Jermaine's, let me say it this way. Can I just be honest? Jermaine is outspoken, but she's not mean. She'll tell you how she feels, but she's not mean. Everybody say she can speak the truth, but it'll just be love. I love you so much. But this is the way it is. Right? How, how hard is that? That's good. That ain't mean. Right? Jermaine will give you anything she's got because she truly loves people. Right? Same way with Jesus. He'll give you everything you ask for, but buddy, I'll tell you what, he'll speak the truth in love. He won't cut no slack for you or me. Did you know that? Well, I'm so-and-so. My daddy was a preacher. My granddaddy, my... I was born among preachers. It ain't gonna matter to God. He's gonna hold you accountable for your own personal life. And that's the bottom line. Well, anyway, now I'm not going to preach on this anymore because I'm going to quit. But I want you to go home and read Romans chapter 1 and 2. Will you? Everybody say Romans 1 and 2. Because it will give you the, the end result of everything I'm talking about. How many of you know, listen to me, one more scripture. It's in Galatians. I'm going to give it to you. I'm just going to say it. God is not mocked. No, you can laugh at God all you want, but God, he's not mocked. You're going to reap exactly what you sow. Man, I wish people could hear that. I wish I could get an atheist by the ears and say, you know what? God's not mocked. Laugh all you want. Think anything you want, but someday you're going to be the one that's crying out, please God have mercy. And tell him, you know what? Do it now. Fall on the rock and be broken, please. 
Somebody says, well, why did you share all that with us? I don't know. Just because I want you to know what day you're living in. You know, you look around and you go, well, I can tell. Maybe it's going to rain tomorrow. But you have no clue what time it is. Spiritually. It's time. We're down to the end. Repent. Everybody say repent. Thank you. Stand up.